Well, it looks like it's about that time. Let's go ahead and get started. Hey, everybody, welcome to this webinar on Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express. That's where we can have a call agent within a router. Let's take a look at our agenda. First of all, I should introduce myself. My name is Kevin Wallace. I'm a double CCA, and I'm going to be leading you through today's presentation. And the first thing we want to talk about today is what is this thing? What is Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express? Or we call it CUCME for short. And after we get through some of the theory and see some of the protocols involved, which I think you'll find really interesting, we're going to spend a big chunk of our time together today in the CLI, in the command line interface, doing some configuration. I want to show you how to add a skinny phone. I've got a 7965 here in the studio. We'll be adding that one. And uh, a SIP phone. I've got a 9971 that supports video. We'll show you how to add that to our Communications Manager Express router. And it's just a fact of life. If you're going to be in the networking profession, you're going to be spending a good chunk of your time doing troubleshooting. And we want to talk about some common troubleshooting issues when it comes to Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express. And then I've been teaching this content for about 17 years now, the, the different voice and collaboration courses. So I want to take some frequently asked questions uh, that I think will, will impact uh, a good chunk of our audience. Uh, so we'll do some FAQs at the end of today's presentation. And I've got a, I got a little bonus to entice you to stick around. I've got a big discount off of uh, some of my video training and you'll learn more about that if you stay to the very end of today's session. For those of you that are not familiar with me, uh, here's my super quick bio. I promise it'll be super quick. My name is Kevin Wallace. I'm a double CCA in routing and switching and, of course, collaboration. That's our focus today. And I've been a CCA for over 15 years now, and I've written a bunch of books, done a lot of video courses for Cisco Press, some that are voice-related. I've done the, uh, the the C voice books. I did about three versions of that for Cisco Press. Now, for people just getting started, I still recommend, it's a few years old, but I still recommend Voice Over IP First Step. That's my favorite book that I've ever written, by the way. Just a, a little insider uh, insider secret. I really love that book. And um, I've done a lot of video as well. I've recently updated my video training. I've got a CCNA collaboration video training series, CCNP collaboration, as well as CCA collaboration. So we cover all that in the different video series. More on that later. But now, let's see what is Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express. Let's take a look out at it in the context of, of a topology with lots of uh, unified communications manager solutions, or lots of unified communications solutions, I should say. Here we've got a couple of phones on screen, and maybe they're registering with a Cisco Unified Communications Manager server. Not Express, that's not what we're talking about today, but there are servers called Cisco Unified Communications Manager servers with which phones can attempt to register. And those servers are great for large enterprise deployments. If uh, we want to scale to to thousands and thousands of users, that's the way we could do it. The uh, Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express is more for the small to medium-sized office. It, it depends on the hardware you have, honestly, and uh, the specs are changing all the time. But in general, you're going to max out around, again, depending on hardware, you're going to max out around about 450 users at a max uh, for a Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express deployment. We've got phones registering with that uh, with that router. We also have a standalone server, Cisco Unity Connection, that would do our voice messaging for us, but if we're setting things up for a small to medium sized office, we can have, uh, we can have a Cisco Unity Express module inside of this router, inside of our Cisco uh, Unified Communications Manager Express router. We can have voice messaging as well as uh, call control in a router. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Uh, we'll not get into any discussion of uh, Contact Center Express today. That's, of course, for having large contact centers, or there's even one larger than that. That's uh, Enterprise Contact Center. But there's a Contact Center Express where you can call into a call center, and calls can be intelligently routed. There's a lot of scripting involved. Just wanted to give you some of the different uh, servers that are in Cisco's Unified Communications uh, product suite. We could... Uh, have conferences set up, video conferences, audio conferences with a multi-point control unit, an MCU. Uh, the I am in present server, uh, Jabber is a big thing with Cisco these days. You can have Jabber clients on your, on your desktop, on your mobile phone, and uh, you could have it on your tablet even. 
and you can set up voice calls and video calls and do collaboration using the Jabber client. And the Jabber client, uh, they commonly log into a Cisco IAM and present server. So I just wanted to give you a taste of, of what all is out there. But again, our focus is on having a call agent in a small to medium sized office. Again, maybe 450 users or so. And it's a router that's running regular Cisco IOS the version of Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express that you have depends on the version of Cisco iOS that you have. And we could have some phones like we see here connected into a switch, or maybe we have a switch module in the router. That's the way I've got it set up here in the studio. And uh, these, these phones could talk back and forth between themselves. Now, let's take a look at some of these specific features that Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express offers. First, we said it does call processing. If you're accustomed to having a key system or a PBX in a, a, a traditional business phone system, this is sort of the replacement for that. Most of the features that you would find in a key system, many of the features that you would find in a, in a PBX, a, a private branch exchange system, they're there within Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express. It's kind of amazing. So, for example, we could set up a call between a couple of phones using either the SIP protocol, the session initiation protocol, or the SCCP protocol. We call that Skinny for short. It's the Skinny Client Control Protocol. Now, a bit of history on this. Cisco got into the uh, to the to the voice, to the unified communications business back in the mid 90s with an acquisition of, uh, of Celsius. It was a company called Celsius and it started with an S. So this used to be the Celsius uh, client communications protocol and now it's a skinny client communications protocol. But um, Celsius uh, still shows up sometimes in, uh, in the terminology that Cisco uses. And for a while, that's pretty much all that was supported. You could use skinny phones, SCCP phones. But Cisco has been becoming more vendor interoperable lately, and they've been focusing more and more on SIP speaking phones. So the trend is definitely away from skinny to SIP, but we can certainly do both on our Communications Manager Express router. Something else to be aware of? Oh, first of all, let, let's talk about how we actually get the session set up. Notice that the skinny and the SIP protocol, that's going between the phones and our call agent between the phones and Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express. And that's the, these are the signaling protocols. We could use either one. These are the protocols that say, hey, I want to set up a call with this number. Here are the codecs I support, the way we encode our voice. Here's the UDP port number that I'm going to be using to send my voice. Oh, and speaking of UDP ports, that's what RTP uses. Notice that once the call is set up using our call control protocols like SIP or Skinny, it's actually oh, hit the wrong button there on my screen. Let's fire that back up again. Using either SIP or Skinny, RTP is going to carry the voice media. The voice packets themselves will be carried via RTP, the real time transfer protocol. And that uses UDP. And it differs by vendor, but Cisco uses UDP ports in the range of uh, 16384 through 32767. Uh, different vendors use use different UDP port numbers. But the big takeaway from, from the past two or three minutes of discussion is we've got protocols that get a call set up, SIP or skinny, and then we've got the protocol that actually carries the voice back and forth between the phones, and that's RTP, the real-time transport protocol. Uh, Real-time transport protocol, RTP, and that's what's happening in that animation on screen. Now, we can have our Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express get out to the rest of the world. We don't have to be talking just between IP phones. Here we see that we're going over a TDM, a time division multiplexed circuit, to get out to the PSTN, the public switch telephone network. This could be an, an ISDN connection based on a T1 circuit or an E1 circuit. By the way, if you want to know more about that, I've got a really, really thorough YouTube video on that. I think it's about, I think it's about 40 minutes, maybe more in length, but it's on uh, T1s and E1s. You can just search my name, Kevin Wallace, and, and uh, T1, and uh, that should pop up on a YouTube search if you want to go learn more about uh, time division, multiplexing circuits, and how they work, and, and how to set them up. Just a side note. But what else does Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express do for us? Well, instead of just or beyond just talking between phones we can talk to other call agents notice on screen that i have pictured 
Cisco Unified Communications Manager server. This is what we said would be for the enterprise solution, not for the small office home office. But uh, we can communicate between the two. They can be part of the same big, happy telephone system. And the protocol that's spoken between Communications Manager Express and the Communications Manager server, that protocol could be, again, SIP as our call control protocol, or we could use H.323. It's a standards-based uh, call setup protocol. And I think I mentioned this a bit earlier, we could integrate Communications Manager Express, the, the call agent, with Cisco Unity Express, often abbreviated as CUE or Q for short. Cisco Unity Express is our, that's our voice messaging system. It lets us do voicemail, it lets us have an auto attendant, and it's, it's literally on a card that we install inside of our router. So that one router could be our call agent, and it could also be our voice messaging system for that small to, to medium-sized office. Pretty amazing. And the configuration for Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express can be done through a GUI or through the command. Actually, there's a couple of GUIs. You could, if you have it set up, and we're not going to take a look at the GUI solution today. We're focused on the commands. That's my favorite sandbox to play in. But you could just point a web browser directly to the IP address, maybe like the loopback IP address of this router, and log in, and you can do, you can do stuff right there, right there in the web interface. But if you're going to configure it via the GUI, pe people typically use something called Cisco Configuration Professional, or CCP. That's a way that we can have a, I think it's Java-based, so... I occasionally have some issues with that, getting just the right version of Java to run on the right version of, of Microsoft Windows. That's sometimes a challenge. But if you get it all working, it's a, it's a nice interface for getting in and doing your day-to-day -day stuff uh, for setting up Communications Manager Express. In fact, that's the kind of thing you need to know at the CCNA collaboration level. And um, I mentioned that I've got that CCNA collaboration course, and I gave you a full full demonstration of how all that works in that course. But again, we're going to be focused on the command line interface today. And I want to show you a demo, and we'll spend most of our time, or maybe half of our time anyway today, inside of this demo. Here's the topology that I've got for you for the demo. I've got a Communications Manager Express router, and I've got a couple of phones attached. And our mission, should we decide to accept it, is to configure the phone on the left. That's a Cisco 9971 phone with, with a camera and video capabilities. We want to configure that in Communications Manager Express, such that that phone will register in Communications Manager Express. And we also want to configure the phone on the right. That's our 7965 uh, Cisco IP phone. Now that would speak either SIP or Skinny, by the way. We're, just to show you the difference, I'm going to do a Skinny configuration for the phone on the right. It would support either one. But I'm going to do a SIP configuration for the for the 9971 on the left. It only does SIP, so we have to use SIP for that one. But this is our topology, and we just want to get these phones added so that they can register with Communications Manager Express and so that they can uh, they can call one another. So let me take you out to our live interface here on BR2. This is the router that's acting as our Communications Manager Express router. Now before I do any configuration. I want to show you some existing configuration that's already in here. I didn't want to take time to configure all of this during today's webinar. Uh, one thing, when the phone boots up, the phone is going to try to get IP address information. It needs an IP address, it needs a default gateway, and so on, just like a PC would. So it's going to boot up, and you can have you can have a Microsoft Windows server acting as your DHCP server, or you could have your router acting as a DHCP server. Absolutely. Or you could have a communications manager server acting as your DHCP server. I'm a big fan of having the router act as a DHCP server and hand out IP address information. And I just wanted to show you the existing configuration I've got for that here. Now, there are different ways of setting this up. I'm using sort of a non-standard way here. I'm setting it up where I've got a couple of DHCP pools. I've got one for phone one. I've got another one for phone two. This allows me to control exactly which phone gets which IP address. I think I had a requirement to do that, and that's the reason I set it up like this. But we could just have one big one big happy pool, and everybody grabs a, an IP address from that pool. But regardless of how we set it up, being one at a time or, or in a pool, a couple of things I want you to notice. The default router. This is an IP address that belongs to the same subnet, the same VLAN, as my phones do. This is my voice VLANs. Um, 
interface. 10.10.160.1. Something else that the phones need when they boot up, they need to know where their call agent is. They need to know where to go download a configuration file. That configuration file is retrieved by the phone using TFTP, the Trivial File Transfer Protocol. And here's the way we say what the IP address is of the call agent. We say option 150. We're using DHCP option 150 and we're specifying an IP address. Here, this is the loopback IP address of this router. It's 10.10.32.3. So this router in this case is acting as my DHCP server or my, excuse me, my TFTP server. It's my call agent. Now, it doesn't have to be. I, I could be pointing over to a communications manager server somewhere. And in that case, in addition to specifying this option, on the interface, on the voice VLAN interface that had this IP address, if my call agent were not local, I would need to use the IP helper address command to specify the IP address of that call agent. Otherwise, remember, DHCP starts out as a broadcast. Uh, it's uh, it's the DORA, the D-O-R-A process. There's the uh, discover, the offer, the request, and the acknowledgement. Well, the discover, it's broadcast. It's going to be dropped by a router unless we have that IP helper address set up. Just a, another little tip for you. But here, no problem. I've got my Communications Manager Express acting as my call agent. So no need for the IP helper address. Something else I wanted to show you. Let me jump right to it. I can do a forward slash and say TFTP. And that will take me to the first instance of TFTP in my configuration. I wanted to show you these commands. TFTP server, and I'm pointing to different files that I've got stored in the flash of my router. And I've actually got an alias set up, pardon the scroll, I've got an alias set up for these, so I don't have to point to the specific subdirectories. I can just look at my root directory, and there's going to be an alias that will point to the appropriate subdirectory. But notice, I've got firmware files that are needed by my different models of phones. I've got files for my 9971. I've got files for my 7965, which happen to be the same as the 7945. That's the reason they're both listed there. But, um, yeah, you want to make sure that you're your phone has access to these files, maybe in the flash of your router. That's the common way of doing it. And uh, I've got all that set up. Now, I want, just wanted to show you that before we got into the actual configuration. Now, first, because it's simpler, let's, uh, let's set up the skinny speaking phone, shall we? Now, here's how we go about doing that. The first thing we do to set up our skinny speaking phone is we globally, I think I just hit the microphone, sorry about that. We globally create the skinny service, the skinny service with which these phones can register. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say in global configuration mode, I'll say telephony hyphen service. This puts me into telephony service configuration mode. And here's where I set up the, the global parameters for my skinny speaking phones. A couple of really, really important commands I want to give at the beginning. Don't want to overlook these. The first one is max hyphen e -phones. In other words, what is the maximum number of skinny speaking phones that can register with this router? I'm going to set it to 10. I'll say it's 10. Now, the default is zero, meaning that by default, zero phones can register with your Communications Manager Express router. That's a sobering thought. So this is, uh, this is a required command. Now, beyond just saying how many phones can register, we need to say how many directory numbers are allowed. Because one phone could have more than one directory number associated with it. So we also need to say max hyphen DN. And just a rule of thumb, you can adopt this to your particular needs. I'm going to say max hyphen DN 20. And something I like to do is say no, no reg both. Let me explain what's going on here. You may not have to give this, but... I used to use gatekeepers a lot, H.323 gatekeepers. And by default, when you have phones registering with a Communications Manager Express router, if that router is registered with a gatekeeper, which has largely been retired and replaced with other technology these days, but um, the, the phone number that was internal, like the, the four-digit extension, for example, that four-digit extension would register with the gatekeeper saying, hey, to get to this phone number, go here. And it would also give the uh, the number that was dialable on the PSTN, like the external phone number. Hmm. 
So it would register every single phone number with the gatekeeper. And I generally don't want that to happen. So uh, I like to say no, reg, both. Another really important command is I need to say which IP address, because I've got more than one valid IP address on my router, I need to say which IP address is going to be speaking skinny. I'm going to say IP source hyphen address, and I'm going to specify my loopback address. It's 10.10.32.3. And I'll specify the port that Skinny uses for communication. That's port 2000. Those are, I would say, those are the required, the absolutely required commands for, uh, for setting up our Skinny phones. But let me give you some other ones that, I'll, that I typically give as well. Oh, by the way, phones can automatically register even before we configure them. I generally don't want that to be the the steady state configuration i want to customize those but you see what happened just now in the background without even trying i just had a phone to register just by configuring that telephony service configuration uh, the, those commands now i'm going to specify the firmware that's going to be loaded if the phone doesn't already have the firmware it's going to go load the appropriate firmware from we just saw it it's in the flash of the router so i'm going to say load and then i need to give the phone model, and it's going to be a, my skinny phone is a 7965, and then I'll specify the actual, I'll specify the actual firmware. Just so I don't mistype it, here's what I like to do. I'm going to, I want to go look at those files in my firmware, or in my flash rather. I'm going to say do, you can give the do, you can give the do command to issue like a show command from within configuration mode so I don't have to hop out and come back in. I'm going to say do show flash pipe to include tftp oh i meant to do a show run not a show flash looking at my running configuration there we're talking about the files living in flash let's take a look i'm looking for my loads file for my 7965 let's see if i can find it here I think this is it yeah sccp so that's my skinny i know it says 45 and i'm really using a 7965 it's the same file though and you can use online documentation to find exactly what you have to use but i know that this is from doing this many times i know this is the one i need to use i want to copy that and then back in my configuration i'm going to say load 7965 and i'll specify that loads file Now it's giving an error message there. It said it's not supported for creating automatic TFTP bindings. Please use the file location. Let's see if it took it. Let's do a show run section telephony hyphen service. Need to do a show run. Okay, it took it, and I've got an alias, so it's going to be fine there. It uh, it kind of fought back because I didn't specify an exact location, but I know that I've got an alias for this file, so it will find it. I don't need to specify the flash. I just wanted to make sure it want to make sure it took it, and it did. So we're good. Something else I often do is set the time zone. We want the time to to be appropriate on the router, so I'm going to set a, a time zone. And you can use context-sensitive help to select an appropriate time zone. I'm pretending that this router is in Tokyo. So I'll say it has a time zone of 44 for Tokyo Standard Time. And I can set the date format that's going to appear on the phone. It could be um, day, month, year, month, day, year. Let's say that I want to use, I'll do the year first, and then the month, and then the day. I don't know how they actually do it in Tokyo, but we can change the date format. What else? What else? Um, oh, here's a big one. If I want to support music on hold, I can do that. So if I put somebody on hold, we can hear we can hear audio playing out. Now, again, I want to find my music on hold file in Flash. I'm going to do a do show Flash pipe to include anything that ends in a .au, the format for my music on hold files. Oh, here it is. There's one simply called music hyphen on hyphen hold .au. So let's Let's copy that one, and I'm going to say MOH. That's my music on whole source, and it's going to be that file. Awesome. Now, I'm going to come back and give this command in a few moments, but I want to show you while we're here. If I make a change to my directory numbers or to my phones, 
I need that change to be updated, or some of those changes need to be updated in the configuration file that the phone downloads when it boots up. How do I rewrite the configuration file for a phone? I do it here. In telephony service configuration mode, I say create, if I could spell it, that would be helpful, create CNF hyphen files. And it's going to create the configuration files. Now, I don't have any phones defined yet. Once I do, and once I make a change, then I can come back here and create those files. So let's get to the business of actually setting up the phone numbers and then a phone to which we can assign that phone number. So the next thing we want to do is, let me exit out of telephony service configuration mode. Next, I want to define a phone number. I'll say ePhone hyphen DN, and I can give a locally significant number here. And this number cannot exceed the max uh, ePhone DN number that I gave earlier. So I'll just typically start at one. Now, this will allow me to have one, one channel for the phone number that I'm about to define. Think about this, uh, your home phone. On your home phone, if you, have, if you still have a traditional landline, and if you have call waiting, you're on the phone with somebody, and then you hear the little beep beep, you know that somebody else is calling in. So you say, hey, I'm getting a call from looks like my mom. Let me put you on hold, and uh, I'll talk to mom, and I'll be right back. So you press the flash button, and you jump over, and you talk to mom. It's like you got two different conversations going at the same time on your home phone. One's on hold, you're talking to the other. That, that's the way it can work, work here in Communications Manager Express. We can have more than one channel, more than one call can be active on this directory number at any one time. But by default, it's just going to be one channel. Somebody calling in would just get a busy signal. But uh, we can change that here. We can say that we want it to be a dual line where we've got a couple of, of channels or... Why not? We can have an octo line where we can have as many as eight simultaneous conversations on a directory number at once. That's kind of amazing. Uh, so uh, we're now in ePhone DN configuration mode, and I'm going to specify the phone number. I'm going to say number, and I'm going to make this according to our topology. I think it was 4002. And again, I don't want this to register with a gatekeeper, so I'm going to say no reg both. I don't want to register this number or the PSTN equivalent number with a gatekeeper. Um, I'm going to give a description. Now, this description is going to appear on the phone display. And I typically like to make it the, um, the E.164 number of the phone, the fully globalized number. Now, a fully globalized number is a number that's it means you can go anywhere in the world, and, and this number completely tells you how to get to some other phone number. It begins with a, a plus followed by the country code. So I'll say I've got a country code of 81. And we'll say the number within the country is going to be 4444-4002, just as an example. Just made that up. And I'll give this phone a name. So this will this can appear in our, our, our show command output or any kind of log information. I'll say the name is BR2 Phone 2. And let's do a couple other things while we're here. Not required, just want to show you a few extra little tricks. Let's say that somebody calls this phone and I'm busy. Maybe I just have, maybe all eight lines are busy, or maybe uh, we could set it up to say when we're busy. But let's say for whatever reason we're busy, and I want to forward it off to, to voicemail. Now, we don't have voicemail set up right now, but let's just pretend that voicemail had a directory number of 4,500. What I could do is say call, for, let me try that again, call forward busy 4,500. So if I'm busy, for the call to that number, or maybe I just don't answer. I'm away from my desk. I just don't answer for a period of time. That would be a call forward, no answer condition. And I could say, again, send it to 4,500. But what constitutes a no answer condition? Eh, we can set it right here with the timeout option. I'll say 10 seconds. If I don't answer for 10 seconds, my phone goes ring, ring. If I don't answer for 10 seconds, off it goes to this number that I've defined here. We've now set up a phone number and a few extra features for that phone number. We've set up a phone number that we call an ePhone DN. That's for our skinny speaking phone. Now let's actually define the phone. Let's uh, let's create the phone. I'll say ePhone, and again, I give a locally significant number, ePhone 1, I'll say. How do we know that a phone is using this ePhone configuration? MAC address. That's going to be unique, isn't it? I'm going to say the phone with the following MAC address is going to use this configuration. Now, I need to get the MAC address, and I could just look on the back of the phone and scribble it down. 
I typically like to look at the uh, show CDP neighbor output instead. Uh, I tend to trust that more. So I'm going to do a, a do show CDP neighbor command. And I happen to know that this skinny speaking phone is attached to fast ethernet 0 slash 2 slash 1. So I'm going to copy this MAC address. Let's copy that. Just making sure I had the right MAC address. Then I'm going to say MAC hyphen address and I'll paste it in. Now I have to use the dotted format. So after every fourth hexadecimal digit, I need to put in a dot. That's the format at once. But I've now specified my MAC address. I can also say, now some of this is optional, but just best practices. I'll say what codec I want to use. How do I want to encode my voice? And maybe I'm concerned about bandwidth usage over the WAN. So I'll use ILBC. That's a, that's a bandwidth friendly codec. I, I also should say what type of phone I'm using. This is a 7965 Cisco IP phone. And now I need to I need some connective tissue to link together the phone number that we just created a few moments ago with this phone. Remember, I created an ePhone DN and I gave it a locally significant number of one. Well, I'm going to say on this phone, I want button one to be associated with ePhone DN one. So I can say one for the button on this phone, colon, and then the one, which is the ePhone DN identifier that we created a few moments ago. And... Yeah, I started to wrap it up. I want to show you one other thing before we move on, though. This is kind of cool. It's not really covered very much in the curriculum. Add that. I want to show you how we can set up soft keys on this phone. Now, a soft key, across the, the bottom of the display, there are some buttons. And those buttons are called soft keys because they do different things at different times depending on your call state. If you're on, on uh, if you're in an on hook state, they do one set of things. If you're off hook, they do another set of things. If if a call is coming in and your phone's ringing, they can do another set of things. Here's how we can set that up. Let's go back out to global configuration mode and go into ePhone template configuration mode. I'll create an ePhone template called one, and I can set up my soft keys for different call states. I'll say soft keys, give a question mark. These are my different call states. Let's just do a few of these. I'll say, if the phone's just on hook, I'm in the idle state. Here are the functions I want available on those soft keys. The first, the first function I want to be available is, I'll say redial. Maybe I then want the new call option. Then I want the do not disturb option. And let's do a call forward all option for the idle state. Let's now set up soft keys for, let's see, how about the seized state? So I've gone off hook. So for the seized state, what are my options? Let's do call pickup. We'll do, just, just as an example here, we'll do pickup, we'll do redial, and we'll do meet me for a conference. Uh, and, and I'll just do one more. Actually, that's enough. Uh, I just wanted to show you how we would do that. So th these are setting up some soft keys for different call states. Now, here's how I link it to the actual phone. I go back into ePhone 1 configuration mode, and I say, I want to apply to this phone ePhone template 1. Now, it says you have to restart this to, to take effect. How do, we, uh, how do we update the configuration file? We talked about it earlier. We go into telephony service configuration mode and uh, we say create CNF files. Now that rewrites the configuration file. After I do that, what I typically do next is I go in and I reset the phone. It's taking longer than it typically should to do that. Okay, finally did it. Let's go into the phone. I'll say ePhone 1 reset. Now we saw that it registered early, so we should see it unregister. There it goes. It's going to take, I don't know, maybe a minute or so for this phone to re-register after it has to, it boots back up, it gets its IP address, it downloads its configuration file. It's not an instant thing, but in a few moments, we should see that this phone has registered. And that's how we configure a skinny speaking phone on our Communications Manager Express router. Now let's shift gears a little bit and let's configure a SIP speaking phone. 
Now, remember, we did the global configuration. Well, let me take a step back from that even. Skinny phones, believe it or not, logically the way it works, they appear, they come in to the uh, Communications Manager Express router and they do not look like a voice over, <coughs> excuse me, they do not look like a voice over IP call leg. If you've ever studied dial peers and you know about voice over IP call legs and you know about POTS, plain old telephone system or plain old telephone service uh, call legs, yeah, the, uh, the skinny phones, they look like a POTS connection. Just like you had an analog phone plugged into a to an FXS port. And the router, the gateway, is perfectly fine with interconnecting a POTS call leg with a voice over IP call leg. No, no issue with that. But for whatever reason, Cisco doesn't by default allow you to interconnect two voice over IP call legs. That's where the problem comes in with SIP. Because the SIP phone, as it comes into Communications Manager Express, as that call is coming in, it looks, like, uh, it looks like a voice over IP call leg. And if you try to call somebody else going out to a destination IP address, that's another voice over IP call leg. Doesn't work. Didn't mean it to get into a discussion of call legs and dial peers, but, but uh, just wanted to, to paint the picture, if you are familiar with that concept, that we've got an issue with SIP speaking phones. And here's how we fix it. We give permission to interconnect a couple of voice over IP call legs. And when we do that, a router goes from being just a mere gateway to being a cube, a CUB, a Cisco Unified Border Element, we call it. Here's how we do that. We go, we're going to say, oh, by the way, this phone did register just now. Probably took about a minute or so like we thought. We're going to say voice service VOIP. And I'm going to give permission to interconnect a couple of SIP call legs. I'm going to say allow hyphen connections SIP to SIP. So if the originating call leg is a... Uh, is, is using SIP and the destination call leg is using SIP, allow that. Now, while I'm at it, I typically just do, do all the combinations. I'll say allow SIP to H.323. And these are unidirectional, so I need to also allow H323 to SIP. And just for completion's sake, I'll allow H323 to H323. So now I've turned this from a gateway into a cube, a Cisco Unified Border Element, which has the unique ability to support calls that are using two voice over IP call legs. Next, I'm going to go into my SIP sub configuration mode, and I'm going to say that I want to bind SIP packets to my loopback interface. I'm going to say bind the SIP control traffic. This is the call setup traffic. I want to bind that to a source interface. I'll just loot, use my loopback zero interface. And I also want to bind my, my media. That's the actual voice packets. I want to bind that to a source interface of, again, loopback zero. And I want to make this router a, regist a SIP registrar server so that phones can register with this Communications Manager Express router. So I had to do that little prerequisite it got a little messy there. Let me let me show it to you. Let's do a let's do a show run pipe to section voice service VOIP so you can just get a, a good look at what I did. And it, it threw in this fax protocol. It does that by default. But here's the uh, here's the section that I just added. Again, this is to allow one SIP phone to call another SIP phone, and to allow SIP phones to register and to bind SIP communication to the loopback interface. Now that we've done that prerequisite, we can do something that's analogous to the telephony service configuration that we did for our skinny phones. Instead of going into telephony service configuration mode, we are instead going, on, going to go into voice register global configuration mode. And because we are acting as a communications manager express router, we need to say that. We need to say mode CME for communications manager express. I need to bind my SIP communications. I know I did it earlier, but I need to do it here also. I need to say sor uh, excuse me, source address, and I'll use my loopback 10.10.32.3, similar to what we did with our skinny phones. For skinny, we used a port of 2000. Uh, SIP uses a default port of 5060, however. We'll specify that. And because this, um, this 9971... I do want it to support video. You might need to play around with this a little bit and uh, vary it depending on your available bandwidth and how much bandwidth you want to use. But in, in my lab environment, here's the bandwidth command that I've come away with after trying lots of combinations. I want to say bandwidth video, TIS modifier. I'm going to use 512,000 kilobits per second allowed for my video. 
and I'll negotiate that end to end. And similar to saying that I wanted to allow a certain maximum number of e-phones and a maximum number of, of directory numbers for my skinny phones, I need to do something similar here. I need to say max DN, my maximum number of directory numbers, I'll make it 20. And my maximum number of phones, the way I say that here for SIP, I say is, I'll say max pool, max pool 10. And I need to get that, that firmware file specified again. So again, let's do a, a show, show, run. Yeah, show, run, pipe to include TFTP. And I'm looking for my skinny file. Here it is. This is the one I want. It's my loads file. And I'm going to say load for a phone model of 9971. I want to specify that loads file. And I'll set up the time zone like we did before. I'll say it's 44 for Tokyo. Time format, I'm going to make it, um, let's see, it's time hyphen format. I can make it 12-hour format where we see AM or PM. Or I can make it 24-hour format where we, have, uh, where we have no AM or PM. I'll make it, uh, I'll say 24. And I'm going to say that my path for my TFTP files, because I've got these aliases created, I'll say my TFTP path is flash colon. And remember how I did the create CNF files command to create the, the configuration files for my skinny speaking phones? Here I can say create profile. It's basically the same function. Create profile. Now I do want to specify an NTP server. That's the way SIP phones get their, get their time. Uh, the, the call agent tells them via N NTP network time protocol. I'll say NTP server 10.10.32.1 that I've got set up in my topology. And I'm going to communicate with a directed broadcast. Now, I mentioned that I wanted to support video calls. So a couple of commands I need to type in here. Camera to support the camera on any phones that have a camera. And video to support phones that have the video display. I've now created this, this global configuration for my, for my SIP speaking IP phone. Now, similar to what we did with our skinny phone, I need to set up a directory number and I need to set up the phone itself. First, let's do the directory number. So again, analogous to telephony hyphen service in the skinny world, we had voice register global in the SIP world. Now, analogous to the ePhone DN configuration in the skinny world, I've got voice register DN in the SIP world. Voice register DN, and I'll give a locally significant number of one. And I'll say this has a phone number of 4001. We'll enter that, and I'll give it a name of BR2 phone one. I'll just leave it at that. We'll keep it simple for this one. Let's now create the phone. I'll say voice, instead of e-phone, I say voice register pool. That's my phone. I'll give it an identifier of one. Need to get that MAC address again for this phone. So let's do a, a do show CDP neighbors command. I know that my SIP phone is connected on fast ethernet zero slash two slash zero. I'm going to copy that and I'll say the ID Mac is, and let's put those dots after every fourth hexadecimal character. We'll enter that. What type of phone is this? Yeah, it's a 70 or rather it's a, it's a 9971. And I want to associate button number one on this phone with voice register DN number one that I created earlier. Something else I do is uh, I like to say DTMF relay because if I'm using a codec other than G.711, it, it might try to compress the dual tone multi-frequency tones when I press a button on the keypad. It might be distorted to the point where it's not intelligible. So there's a way to, to relay my dial digits, not as those tones. There's different ways of doing it. I typically use uh, SIP's uh, KPML approach, which is the keypad markup language. The description, which is going to display on the phone, I'm going to give the fully globalized number again, the E.164 number. It's going to be a plus 81444400401. I'm going to specify the codec. Now, different, different phones can support different types of codecs. 
and by that I mean skinny phones versus zip phones. I'm gonna I'm gonna specify. Let's let's just use G711 ULaw. That should work. And I'll say uh, one of the thing I typically do is no VAD, no voice activity detection. Voice activity detection is uh, it's a function. It's got a good intent. It really does. It's trying to say bandwidth. If it detects silence on the line, instead of sending silence, which takes up just as much bandwidth as, as talking, it says, well, I'm going to suppress the sending of the sound of silence. Uh, and uh, that can lead to some clipping a little bit of the first part of a syllable. Uh, I don't like it. I like to turn off that. So uh, got that turned off. Now, I've got my phone created. Let's go back and recreate that configuration file, shall we? Let's go back into voice register. Sorry, voice register global. And I'll say once again, create profile. And we might need, sometimes... You just need to do a reset, or you just need to uh, unplug and plug the phone back in. I'm going to go over to my, I'm going to be out of the uh, microphone range probably, but just real quick, I'm going to go over to that phone, and I'm going to go into the administrative screen, and I'm going to do a reset. So you're probably not able to hear me very well right now. I'm trying to talk loud as I go over here. Actually, before I even touched it, it reset on its own. So uh, sometimes you have to do that, sometimes you don't. Looks like in this case I did not have to. Didn't even touch it, and we see that that phone has registered. Awesome. Let's give some verification commands. I can do a, a show voice register pool one uh, brief, and that will just tell me that, yes, this SIP phone is registered. I could also do a show ePhone command, and we can see that this is active as well. Here we go. We're registered. Beautiful. Um, again, you might not be able to hear this too well over the microphone. It's about it's about 15 feet away, but I'm, uh, let's see if we can place a phone call. I'm going to try to call from one phone to the other. So I'm going off hook on my SIP phone right now, and I'm dialing 4002. And hopefully you can hear the skinny phone ringing now. Go off hook. And we got a little... Got a little feedback there when uh, when I went off hook because they're sitting right next to each other. But hey, great news! We were able to to configure a SIP phone and a Skinny phone to register with our Communications Manager Express router. Fantastic! Now let's turn our attention to some troubleshooting because, like I said, it's a fact of life. We're going to have to do some troubleshooting of this stuff. One common issue that we we have is the phone doesn't have power. We need power over Ethernet, or we need a we need to have one of those adapters that you can buy extra to, to give local power to the phone. I really prefer to use power over Ethernet. I think it's a much more elegant solution. What might be going wrong with power over Ethernet, though? Well, first of all, let's verify that we've got a good physical connection. Maybe that little tab on your RJ45 plug is broken off. You don't want that. Let's verify we got a good physical connection. You could also do a show power inline to make sure that your, your switch or your, your router is providing sufficient power. If it has sufficient power, are you using appropriate PoE standards? Those are, there are different standards. We've got uh, 802.3AF uh, and, and AT. Are you providing appropriate power? And speaking the, speaking the PoE love language of your phone, make sure everything is compatible with one another. Something else that could be going on, something else to consider is Cisco Discovery Protocol. You see, we talked earlier about the voice VLAN, the VLAN that's carrying the voice. How does the phone know that? I don't think I mentioned that. How does the phone know what VLAN we're in? Well, that's thanks to the Cisco Discovery Protocol. And it has to be Cisco Discovery Protocol version 2. I've, I've run into that issue before. You can do a show VLAN brief to make sure that you've got the appropriate voice VLAN set up on your switch or on your router. You can do a show CDP command on the switch, make sure it sees the phone. You might also want to check, and well, this will tell you if you're running version 2 or not, I believe. So check that out. Uh, something else that could go wrong is with uh, DHCP. We talked about that earlier. We're going to send this DHCP uh, discover message. Uh, and uh, we're going to get some reply, but that initial discover request, it's, um, it's a broadcast. And as a result, it might be blocked by a router if we're trying to reach a call agent that's a router or one or more router hops away. 
So let's uh, verify that we've got the IP helper desk command configured on the voice VLAN interface. Also, we just might have misconfigured the DHCP server for some reason. Let's check out that configuration. What else to consider? Well, we know that after the phone boots up, it learns its voice VLAN. It gets its, it gets its um, TFTP address, remember is option 150 from DHCP. It then reaches out to that TFTP server and it attempts to download its XML configuration file as well as any firmware files that it might need. Well, let's make sure that if that doesn't seem to be working, let's make sure we can ping whoever's acting as our TFTP server. In our case, it, it, it was the Communications Manager Express router. And let's make sure those files really exist on the router. All right, guys, I tried to shoot for about an hour. I think we're, we're getting close to that, uh, getting uh, close to that time for this webinar. But uh, I want to wrap it up and, and take some frequently asked questions. Before I jump into the frequently asked questions, I promised you a a bonus sort of a sort of a thank you for joining me on this webinar and I mentioned earlier that that I've got some video courses I've got 25 videos that make up my CCNA collaboration video training series I've got 22 videos that make up my CCMP collaboration video training series and having taught collaboration and voice courses for I guess about 17 years now one thing that I've noticed is the NA and the NP tracks they cover the same set of stuff they're all talking about communications manager communications manager express they're talking about cisco unity connection the i'm in present server it's 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 all there the np just goes into it in more depth so i think it is a fantastic idea to to get these two video training series together they really do complement one another and when you do that i'm throwing in a couple of other bonuses in a, in a product i'm going to discount for you i've got uh, bonus number one is 28 videos where I'm setting up just a bunch of features, a bunch of features within Cisco Unified Communications Manager, the server-based call agent. Uh, you see, prior to this being uh, collaboration, it was the voice track with Cisco. And I had a CCMP voice training series. And of course, some things changed when it went to collaboration. Some software up, or some of the features got updated and how you configure them. So what I did, I went through about 80 videos and I noticed that 28 of them had not changed. You can figure the features identically now as you did then. So these 28 videos from that CCMP voice training series, they're completely applicable to your collaboration study. So I'm throwing those in. And also one of the big points of confusion that lots of people have when it comes to, to voice is quality of service. That, that's, a, that's a topic for the NA collaboration, the NP collaboration, and the IE collaboration uh, tracks. So I've included 12 videos for QoS to get you up to speed on that. Now, I group all that together. Normally, if you bought all that individually, let's see, each of those initial programs are 197 each. Uh, yeah, we're it's around $500. It's around $500 or maybe between $450 and $500 if you were to buy all those individually. But um, I, I bundle those together in what I call my collaboration combo pack. And I, I give a huge discount um, and I make that discount $294. So it's a, it's a huge savings to get all that collaboration information. But as a thank you for joining me on this webinar today, I'm going to take another $50 off. You can go to the web address you see on screen. You can go to kwtrain.com slash combo get this combo pack kwtrain.com slash combo and over on uh, that'll take you to the uh, to the purchasing screen for the combo pack over on the right hand side there's a place to enter an offer code enter the code webinar webinar that will give you fifty dollars off so you, now you get all this for 244 that's a deal and that's my thank you for being here today i really appreciate that now let's go over some frequently asked questions one question, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, this one gets asked a lot. We talked about H.323. We talked about SIP. We talked about Skinny. The question is, does Communications Manager Express support MGCP? And the answer is no. No, it does not. MGCP is uh, it's sort of a client-server call control protocol. We use it on Communications Manager servers sometimes but no no it's not supported on communications manager, manager express great question though what about um oh yeah hardware what hardware is required to run communications manager express well 
It just, it depends. Uh, you can you can actually run Communications Manager Express on on really old like twenty six hundred series routers, but you're going to be running a really old version of Communications Manager Express. It's going to be like version three dot something, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, but you, you need an ISR router like a 2800 series, a 2900 series as a couple of examples to run the more modern versions of Communications Manager Express. Uh, personally, I'm running uh, I'm running an ISR2 router here in the studio. Uh, I've got uh, I've I've mainly got I've mainly got 2911s. And that'll do it for you. Oh, and, and here's another question that I think we already I think we touched on this one earlier. And that is how do we upgrade to a new version of Communications Manager Express. And the way you upgrade Communications Manager Express is you upgrade the Cisco IOS. Because if you have the, the, the collaboration license for your Cisco IOS image, it enables this feature. Or if you, or if you have the Communications Manager Express license, it enables this feature. And it's just a, it's a function of what Cisco IOS version of your, uh, that you're running. That determines your CUCME version. Uh, well, let's see one more question. Oh, yeah, great, great question to wrap up on. Another commonly asked question is, uh, I get this one a lot. If if we go out and buy this collaboration combo pack course, how long do we have access? Well, a couple of things. Both of them are good news. I've got no intention of taking this down. Now, who knows where I'm going to be in 25 years? Hopefully, I'll still be alive in 25 years. But uh, who knows what's going to happen in 25 years? But I. I I don't, at this moment, have any intention of taking this course down. I intend for you to have ongoing access. So, good news there. Secondly, the videos are downloadable. On day one, if you want to, you can go in and you can download every single video. So, even if, even if, uh, even if my site goes off the air, which I have no intention of doing, uh, if it goes off the air tomorrow, you still got all the videos. You can go, uh, you can go download these videos. And you've got them for however long you you can hang on to those files. So yeah, I've got no intention of taking the course down. Now maybe in the future a new course comes out, I might hide this one or something. Uh, just so people don't go out and buy it. But I have no intention of taking it down. So, uh, so no worries there. Uh, and you can download all the videos. Again, let me just recap the offer here. Uh, for being on the webinar, you can go to kwtrain.com slash combo. Give the offer code of webinar on the right-hand side of the screen. And you get this big, how many videos do we have here? I didn't count them all up. Let's see, 30, 40, 50. Um, yeah, it's like 90 plus videos, I guess. I tried to do the math quickly in my head there. Might have missed that. But yeah, I think it's around 90 plus videos you get for $244. Pretty incredible deal. Again, kwtrain.com slash combo. Hey, big thank you for joining me today, everyone. And if you want to keep track of me, I'll just leave this on the screen for a few moments. Uh, here's, uh, here's how you can follow me at my, my homepage, which is kwtrain.com, as well as my different social media outlets. I'm frequently pay, uh, posting uh, practice exam questions, and uh, I've, got a, I've got a podcast, and I'll, I'll post links to the podcast. And uh, I've got all sorts of uh, blog, question, or blog posts that I, I put out there and videos. So lots of things to, to watch. If you do nothing else, go to my YouTube channel. I've got hundreds of videos out there that you can watch for free. Again, I'll put this, uh, give another glimpse at this. Go back to the offer page so you can see that link. And we will go ahead and wrap it up. And again, thanks so much for joining me. And I hope to see you in this Collaboration Combo Pack course.